and welcome to the presentation of my student research abstract about the topic using local activity encoding for dynamic graph pooling in structural dynamic graphs. My name is Silvia Bella Wiesing. I'm a PhD student at the University of Kassel in Germany. To start with, what is a, a structural dynamic graph? Let me give you a short example. Imagine we have a graph with four nodes and four edges. And how can the dynamic on this graph look like? For example, the edges can be added or deleted from over time, or even new nodes can occur or nodes can be deleted over time. So when it now comes to learning on such a stru uh, structured dynamic graph, the problem is twofold here. And I want to show you what are the problems. A very common representation of a graph is an adjacency matrix. It is, um, its dimensions are uh, the same as the number of nodes. So in this, um, in this case, four times four, and it includes zeros and ones, ones whenever a pair of nodes is connected by an edge and zero if not. And if you may guess directly, this adjacency matrix can change over time. For example, when new edges occur or edges are deleted, the adjacency matrix changes. And there are already models that can handle this problem. However, when it comes to, for example, the addition of nodes or deletion of nodes, the dimension of the adjacency matrix is inconsistent over time. And this is one major problem um, that, is, uh, that, are, uh, that the models at the moment are dealing with. So how can we deal with these inconsistencies when we want to learn on such a structured dynamic graph? On the one hand, of course, we can design a model that can handle directly these changing node sets. This is what I'm doing in one part of my PhD. But today I want to show you another part of my PhD where I designed a pre-processing module that creates a substitute graph of the structured dynamic graph, which can be processed since we have the same node set for each timestamp. Okay, but let's start with the overall module. The module is called Dune Heat Map because it works on dynamic graphs, generates a heat map, and afterwards pools from this heat map to create a substitute graph. And this is what I basically showed here. We uh, have a look at a graph at a certain timestamp. We generate a so-called heat map by considering the activities of the nodes or the incident neighborhood of a node regarding additions and deletions separately. And then we pull from these graphs um, using the corresponding heat map activity as um, probability for pooling. With this, we generate a graph of a certain size and this can be used as input for further purposes, for example, for a graph neural network. Okay, so now let's have a, a deeper look into the two steps. When it comes to uh, the heat map generation, we want to encode the local activity of the nodes. Let's have a look at this example graph. At, first, at the first timestamp, T0, two nodes and an edge are added to the graph. This is when we would say both nodes are highly active. And again, for example, in the second timestamp, T1, a new node occurs and the adjacent node and the node itself become highly active regarding additions. And on the other hand, if there are no incident activities happening, as for the bottom node, the activity decreases from time to time. And we could also say that after a certain period, this node becomes inactive regarding, for example, additions. And this is what I illustrated here with uh, the square at timestamp four. And um, of course, when the activity decreased from time to time, even if a node becomes inactive, when there is a new incident activity happening, the node can become highly active again, as for example, in timestamp four. And um, we want to consider the activities regarding additions and deletions separately. And uh, so when we, for example, look at timestamp five, we see that there is an edge and a node deleted and the corresponding incident or adjacent um, nodes become highly active regarding deletions. 
And how do the heat maps look like for each timestamp? Well, we basically um, accumulate all of the activities of the nodes within two, two vectors separately. The left one here is for the addition activity and the right one for the deletion activity. And this is why the left vector starts dark with a high activity um, and the right one is um, empty because there were no deletions happening at these timestamps. While, for example, at timestamp five, you can see that the first time the deletions, um, the deletion activities become highly active. Okay, so now we want to pool from these graphs using the heat maps as probability as pooling probabilities for the nodes. And we want first to sample a certain number of nodes from these graphs with respect to their activity. Um, addition and deletion, of course. And we then want to sample from the neighbors, again, a fixed number of uh, neighbors with respect to their activity. And here we also want to respect um, a certain ratio of additions and deletions in um, the sampling um, to, for example, uh, address unbalanced data sets. Okay, so let's have a look at the example graph again. We now want to sample two nodes for each timestamp. And if there is an edge between, we take it with us. Otherwise, we have an unconnected graph. And of course, the um, probability of choosing a graph is higher if there is a higher activity. But we can also sample, of course, a node with a lower activity. And then the second step, we now want to sample one neighbor per each timestamp so that we get a graph of three nodes in total per each timestamp. Uh, however, you may have noticed that in the first timestamp, we only have two nodes. So what we do here is basically we add another node that is inactive so that we get a graph uh, with two nodes at this timestamp too. Okay, so now the question is, is this module suitable also for real-world applications? Because when you have a look at the overall runtime, you see that, okay, the algorithm is quadratic in the number of nodes you see in total in a certain time period multiplied by the number of timestamps you're looking at. And this is quite bad. But if we limit the number of sampled nodes and the number of sampled neighbors, we can already reduce the runtime to linear time. And in addition, when we look at graphs that where only one change appears per timestamp. The algorithm runs in constant time per each timestamp. And indeed, many reward graphs that are dynamic in their structure assume that there is only one change per timestamp. And so this means that we utilize uh, this um, that we can utilize this module as a preprocessing um, step for enabling the learner learning on structured dynamic graphs via processing attributed dynamic graphs. And as you may have noticed, the dynamic graph pooling also supports the condensation of information in the graph and leads to a dimension reduction. This was my presentation of my student research abstract. I thank you very much for your attention. I'm very happy to see uh, if you have any questions.